Anyway, I was leaving yesterday. My mom looked me in the eye. Tess, I do not like that haircut. You look like a substitute gym teacher. <laughs> then she hugged me for a long time, whispered in my ear, I feel light, honey, weightless. Thank you. All right, give it up for Tess. Next up, we have a familiar face here at the Rabbit Room. He looks extra serious tonight, Just extra something. So let's welcome him to the stage, Jeff. How's everybody? All right. Everybody, uh, Wang Chung tonight. <laughs> I once sat at O'Hare Airport for three days. I missed my connection to Detroit and decided I didn't want to go. So I just sat and sat. Oh, I, uh, I sampled neck pillows. I, I read ladies' fashion magazines at Hudson News. Uh, I ate at the food court. No one sees you there. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's more anonymous than a brothel. I've been scared before, real scared. Being there, no place for me, nowhere to go. That was something new and terrible, though. One place that I would not go, Arby's. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've heard of this place. It's a simmering cauldron of rancid near meat. Rubber sheets of God knows what, and they serve it on a, a, a bread roll that's soft as puppy shit. And these bastards will not make a straight, unwavering goddamn french fry. <laughs> They're all curled, bent. I, I mean, you know, some guys can clear a house in Mosul. They can shoot a rabid dog. They can take your seat on an armored transport on the last Tuesday of your tour, and all they can talk about, all they can say is they need some Arby's. They want some Arby's. They could kill somebody for some goddamn Arby's. Something wrong with that. Something wrong with him. His plug ain't sparking. Dude ain't right. Anyway, you, you people probably like that Arby shit too, don't you? Yeah. Uh, okay, well, great. Then I got something for you guys. You wanted it, you got it. Oh. I really, really hate Arby's. Arby's can kiss my ass. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Uh, next up, we got Donnie D. Jeff, hey, what was that? What happened to Ghost Boy? I wanted to do something else. Yeah, but we were all here to hear the ending of Ghost Boy. I mean, test baked your cake. Yeah, they said finish it by next week or forget it. Wait so... a minute, who said what now? Sophie, the new voices publisher. Oh. Well, hey, man, you come back inside, you know? Have a I can't. I got to go scrub urinals. Oh. Look, come to Shawnee tomorrow, OK? We'll make a plan. We'll figure this out. Seriously? Hey, that's what I do. 
I'll try anything. All right, man. Go, will ya? I'm freezing. Thanks. You're late. Slow walker, fast clean it up. How long is this going to be going on? It's an old injury, Sully. I don't know. It comes and goes. When does it go? I don't know, Sully. Call the VA. Maybe they can give you a better prognosis. Maybe I call the agency, get myself a fully functional worker. Oh, Sully, your toilets are going to get just as clean, man. Nah, I'll clean the toilets tonight. You vacuum. Every floor from here to 29. Sully, S Sully, come on, man. Just do what you're told.
You're done. Get out. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, bless us, O Lord, and these are gifts which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Go to mass? I did. Boy, I was really going last night, Mom. Hmm. I read this thing and it really got me going on Fox Island. The story's called Ghost Boy. It was written by Jeff from Shanaki. Hmm. Man, it's different. Usually this guy's stuff is so controlled, so precise, but this is savage. It's like he's, it's like he's tearing holes in the paper, but with a grace, a beauty. He's having trouble with the ending, though. Mm, what's the matter with it? I honestly don't know. I think it's great. God love him. You make sure you help him. I will. I am. What's this? That journalist man, Steve, called again last night. Ma, no. Well, he has talked to everybody in town except you, of course, and now he's going to Los Angeles. Ah, oh, what a shame. I agree. So I told him that you would make it work. I gave him our address and I told him you'd call him back. Ma, what are you doing? Well, he was very pleased. He said it was at your convenience and you can choose the time. I'm very busy. I know. I told him. Take credit for your work. You know what you did for her. Quit hiding. Please stop. Still working on the Roth? No, it's a new one. Oh, what is it? Eternal. God damn it. What? I just wanted to see what all the excitement was about. I mean, does he love the vampire or kill her or what? The librarian said that they're making a movie at Christmas. How exciting. Mr. Comey, this is Thomas Slattery returning your call. I'm sorry that we haven't connected, but I've been very, very, very busy. Listen, I assume that you are going out of town for the holiday weekend, but if not, I would be very happy to have a chat with you. Let's say this Saturday around noon at the same address that my mother was so kind to give you. All right, then. Talk later. Well, now. Eat your egg.
Jeff. Yeah. What's up? It's Sal. Yeah, Sal, I know. You got a guy here down the stairs. No visitors, man. I told him. He won't budge. Says he knows you. Who is he? Roosevelt. Yeah. Please, just, just tell him I'm, I'm not here. Every day I walk, the weight of habit sending me down Rockwell from Addison. Here, a dog walker's winding drive. On to Clark Park, the boathouse a royal crown and supplication to the sky, and down to the edge of the river, that blue-gray cut carving through the brown city slab. Then, always, back to McDonald's on Addison. McDonald's Playland in full truth, the security guard is there, hurting high school students streaming in from east and west. A uniform of sorts, a star of some description. He is stocky, his voice a booming calm. His name is Charles. Charles was the first to show me, the first to teach me. I have seen Charles 265 times. He has never seen me. Once in January, his eyes flicked in my direction. Vacant, unfocused, four feet away, it was only the movement of his neck. I wasn't there. Charles was just bored. Charles did not nod. His eyes did not widen in acknowledgement. It was then I knew. I am not alive, not quite. I am not present in this world, not quite. I should have been shocked, I wasn't. I didn't already know, but I should have. You will think I at least should have cared. I didn't. Maybe it was a kind of freedom. I could stand on one of the black tables at Orange Garden and scream for more egg rolls. I could walk across the 18th green at Ridgemore Country Club. I could sing Nina Simone songs at prayer service at the conservative synagogue on Devon. I could walk into incoming metro train traffic. I could stab Charles. I could take my army rifle and slowly and surely shoot every person in the Starbucks on Northwest Highway at 7.30 a.m. I was a ghost. I am the ghost. All right, very nice. Is that new? Because that sounds a lot like your last version of that section. I did make um, a few tweaks, but no, that's, that's all I got. All right. Well, since we're not plowing any new ground there, anybody else? Anyone have anything new? How about you, T? What do you got? <sighs> All right. Let's have some snacks. <laughs> hey. Hey. Looks good. Yeah, it's a bigger spread than last year. So still no ending, huh? No. Hey, let me talk to you for a minute, right? So the new voice is anthology. Yep. It's a big deal to be asked. 
I know. Take it from me. I know. It's really good what you wrote, Jeff. You should be very proud. Thought you were gonna help me. I am, I'm just stating your options. If you let them print the version of Ghost Boy that you gave them, it's gonna be fantastic. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Duly noted. Mm-hmm. That's option one. Mm-hmm. And option one is out. Mm. Period. <laughs> Okay. Mm, 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 mm. Can I ask why? Because I want Ghost Boy to do what he's supposed to do. He can't go home. If I had any guts, I'd kill him. Then do it. I can't. I won't do that. But I know the ending is wrong. Okay, okay. You want integrity, I, I, I get that. On the other hand, the career move here is to let them publish it. Is that what you would do? Ah, uh, man, I don't know. I guess I'd go with integrity. I guess I'd go with integrity too. Yeah, okay. So, let's help you find it. Really? Yeah, you're right there. Can we do that now? No. I gotta go to work tonight. Day before Thanksgiving's the biggest bar night of the year. Right, right. And tomorrow, I got Thanksgiving with my mom. I'll tell you what, let's say Friday morning, 10 a.m., right here. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. And listen, just relax. Listen, if you don't have any plans, we'd be glad to have you over for the holidays. It's just me and Ma. Oh. Turkey, football. No, yeah, thanks. Uh, I, I, I'm supposed to meet a friend, so. Okay. But, but, thank no. you. No, okay, good, good. The invite's there if you want it. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna head back. My Q will light up a Cuban if he's left unsupervised. You will finish this. I guarantee you. Thanks, Thomas. Ma? Huh? Oh, Thomas. Thomas, oh. What? I, I, it's okay. I had this dream. Oh, it was this terrible dream. It was so real. I, I can see it still. It's okay, it, you're, no, you're here now. No, no, it was so real. I was in Tipperary, and um, I went to the river, and, um, and then uh, my sisters and our friends were there, and we were all young uh, and like we were. And then they were pointing the lamp at the salmon like we used to do. Yeah. And 
then they were calling to me and they were reaching out and they wanted me to come into the water and oh I know I was so afraid it's okay You're and I here. wanted to go go where uh, to the river I wanted to go to the river <laughs> it's okay it's okay Ma. it's okay it was just a dream you're okay, you're right here. <laughs> I'm not a fearful person. I'm not. It's okay. It's okay, Mom. It's okay. Hello? Hey, Dad. Heard you stop by. I wasn't home. What are you doing here? I was worried. No one could find you. Ah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm right here. Are you okay? How's that foot? Oh, it's, it's great. Foot's great. I'm sorry about what happened. That boy from Indiana? I know you two were tight. The VA called me. When are you going back? Don't know. I was hoping I could buy you a turkey dinner tonight. Well, I'm real busy. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I just can't. Oh. I'm at the... Uh, Patchy Motel, if you change your mind. Room 9. Listen, I can't explain what this is right now. But I'll be back one day. Soon, I hope. Jefferson. Yeah, uh, I gotta get going. Don't spend another Thanksgiving alone. Please? Beautiful filigree, isn't it? Yes, it is beautiful. Thank heavens that Loretta didn't get these in the divorce, or she would have melted them down for some Pinot Grigio. Yeah, we dodged a bullet there, Ma. Mm -hmm. Want a highball? On an empty stomach? No. Later? Later, I will have a highball so gargantuan it'll need its own zip coat. Later it is, then. You need some help? I no, 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 no. I'm good. Seriously. Uh, I only do this once a year. No, really. Believe me, once a year. Yeah, sit and talk to Mom. We're just about there. I read your story, Ghost Boy. <laughs> really? How? I'm a snoop. I went and I found it. <laughs> oh, okay. 
Ghost Boy. Is that you? Me, um, no. It's, it's somebody else. He's so real, and yet like a wisp of smoke at the same time. <laughs> hmm. Thomas tells me that you are from Flint. Yeah. Three generations of auto workers. Mm -hmm. In County Tipperary, my family farmed rocks. <laughs> when I was a little girl and my family was leaving Ireland, they gave a party for us. It was called Our American Week because no one ever came back. I never came back. It wasn't easy, but you do what you have to do. You know what I mean? I think I do. If you ever need something, you come here. We take care of writers in this house. Well, 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 look what I well, have here. Mm -hmm. Looks wonderful. It smells yeah. amazing. It is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, all right then. Well, now. Your mom, she's a, she's something. Yeah, she's something. I'm not sure what, but. <laughs> so, 10 a.m. tomorrow, okay? Don't be late. Yeah, not a chance. I'll be there. All right. All right. Good night, man. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Ma, what are you doing? I'm just checking the strands. I told you not to mess with the Christmas stuff. It's too early checking yeah, well, the strands. God knows I'll never get you down to the hardware store if one of the bulbs goes out. All right. Can we take a union break here for a little refreshment? Oh, yes. Mm -mm, there you go. Mm -hmm. Happy Thanksgiving, Mom. Yeah, there's mud in your eye. Mm. How's your highball, Ma? Strong. Nice and strong. Well, I am a professional bartender. You most certainly are not. No, I'm not, huh? No. You're a professional writer who happens to tend bar for now, for now. Yeah, you always say that. Well, because it's true, isn't it? Yeah, it's true. Have you solved that problem with that chapter with John and his brother? I have indeed. I think this is going to be it for you, Thomas. From your lips to God's ears, Ma. I'm so proud of you. A professional teacher and writer. I see that whiskey is getting to you. <laughs> Shut up. And go get that new chapter. Really? Yeah, hey, go get it. I know that you've typed it up already, haven't you? And I will sit here and drink my whiskey and listen to my son's words. All right, last call, hut her off. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. John didn't jump out to find old Blanton. He just looked ahead. At the wide green river, he just paddled on and on. He didn't steer the boat. It steered itself. Even with a strong current running into him, the canoe kept pushing, nosing to a destination of its own until finally it stopped, the hull swooshing into the soft sand 
of Fox Island. That's what the locals called it. Named for foxes or the lack of foxes for what John had no idea. But he knew foxes. And it repeats, and we do it again. You want to try? Good, thumbs up. Sorry about that. I had to take that call. Did not think it would go that long. I'm glad you went with the original ending. I love it. Ghost Boy materializes at the end. It's what I always thought. All right. Oh, hun, you didn't sign. Sophie, I'm, I'm really sorry. Oh, I no. appreciate everything that you have Look, done for Jeff, me. Jeff, listen, I, I've seen this before. At some point, you just, you have to let it go. You write the thing and you set it free. You see this, Jeff? I press this button. I send the story to the publisher. They set the type, they do the thing. Sign the contract. I press the button. Your life could change, just like that. Get you. Yeah, is Thomas around? He's off. Taking some time away. Off? Like, what, days? Weeks? No idea. I got a last minute call tonight. They said he was already gone. Oh. You're Jeff, right? Yeah. Danny. Nice to meet you. I heard you read those ghost boy bits. Oh, cool. Cool. I just wanted to say, my dad did three tours over there, and he never really did come back all the way. But you, when I hear your stuff, I can see him. I can feel him. You're a writer? Yeah, that's why I'm here. You think you could write about him? Uh, no. Mm, not yet. It's a treacherous road. It's not good if it doesn't hurt, right? 
কেনে গেছে হ্যালো হাই ডু আম ফোন আনতে সো আই ডোন্ট নো ইউ ওয়ার্ক ইন দ্যাট ডে ইউ মাইট হ্যাভ বিন অফ Yeah, you off. So, anyway, they finally looked under his bed. Oh, what did they find? Was it terrible? 64 rolls. <laughs> what? <laughs> 64 bread rolls. What? And a paper bag from the jewel. Oh, God. <laughs> you remember uh, Nora, the food lady with the, the, the blue hair and the green teeth. Mm. Remember how she used to complain, somebody is stealing my bread rolls. God, how I hated her. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Charlie had 64 rolls, hard as a stone. <laughs> I mean, dude had no legs. But he somehow got down to that cafeteria and stole that woman's rolls. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Charlie said Nora planted them rolls, put a case on him. I am going to miss it there. Not her, though. She hated me. <laughs> miss it? Yeah, I'm leaving. My friend has a, a shop or gallery of sorts in Colorado, and, and she offered me a job and helped me sell my work. Your paintings? Yes. Finally. I'm going to do it. I need you to uh, take this. Veronica, what's this? Spark's mother drove to the VA in Chicago. Four hours just to find you. I told her I would give this to you. <sighs> they want to give this to you. It's from Sparks. I don't want it. To you. You're avoiding calls and what? Walking out? Veronica, nothing in that box <laughs> can help me. You won't even open it. How do you know? I'm moving in two weeks. I gave his mother my word. Okay. I'll take it. But will you open it? When I'm ready. Jeff, you're stuck, and with good reason. But we both know what happens to people who stay stuck. And I know you're stronger than this. Hey! Hey! Hey, stop! I said... I said stop! Tower cough! Stop, I said! Tower cough! Tower cough! pretty good actually too bad yeah. grocery list
question. Soon to be a major motion picture. Well, I should hope so. Is that okay? I just prefer using the background on that side. Uh, no, yeah, I, I prefer that for this. What is this again? YA Jouster, hashtag teen voices. Okay. I'm here to uncover the untold Harmony Jones story. And today is the cherry on top of the Sunday. Oh, well, i try to give you a good Cherry. Tom, when did you... Uh, uh, Thomas. My name is Thomas. So sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Thomas, when did you first meet Harmony Jones? Uh, I first met Harmony when she came to Shawnee. Her cousin Glenda was a member and vouched for her on an audition. And Shawnee is a powerhouse writing group here in Chicago. Powerhouse. Well, prize winners, National Book Award winner even. Sure, why not? Some prize winning yourself too. Granta, New Voices Anthology. Nothing in a while, but... The... That is correct, yes. And you started the group, right? Uh, actually, my ma named it uh, Shawnee, Irish storyteller. Nice. So, Harmony Jones, first impressions. Uh, small, wiry, uh, wearing a sweater like a prayer shawl. Wow. Okay. But her work, when you heard that, it blew you away? Uh, you know, the first thing she wrote was a breezy little piece about her calico kitty. Mittens. <laughs> I'm serious. Well, okay, but obviously you heard a lot more of Harmony's work later. Ethelene Frick. Ethelene. That's how I knew her. Ethelene. Okay. We'll call her Harmony, though. Your dime, your dance floor. So? You want a trip? N no. Like I say, you became very familiar with Harmony's writing. I don't think so. You read the original draft of what became Eternal. I'm not sure. You did. Harmony told me. Well, she told the junket, but I was up right up front. You read the original draft of one of the greatest novels ever written. One of the greatest novels ever written? Steve, who says that? I do. You? Hey, what the hell is this? Okay, look, I'll be honest with you. I am a little bit of a harmonizer. A harmonizer? A super fans of Harmony Jones and Eternal? Yeah, what does your editor think about that? Editor? I'm a, an influencer. Twitter, Goodreads, a booktuber, hashtag leading voice. Harmony Jones led me here. It was her writing that changed my life. Thomas, and I know you read the first pages of Eternal. These are scanned copies of the first pages of the first draft of Eternal with your notes in the margins. Bringing in a rival vampire, moving the denouement back to Eternal Mansion, her father's Steve. death. How much money did she make from this? 
120 million copies sold worldwide in 39 languages. DMG paid a record fee for the film rights. The film premieres in two weeks. Any comment? It sure beats $12 an hour plus tips. What does that have to do with anything? I don't even own a car. Wait, Thomas, can you please just... So I plan on showing him this one. So I think it's gonna go through, but if not... Oh, God, the one's ready on deck, so... Oh, God. He just called. And what'd he say? Tess, uh, it's Thomas. Look, I know we have a meeting today, and I just wanted to say that I cannot be there. I just can't. And for that matter, I won't be coming back to any meetings at all. I'm a bartender, so that's what I'm going to do. You're ready for this anyway. Okay, then. Goodbye. Goodbye? I mean, as, as, goodbye? Has anyone spoken to him? I mean, that's no. since Wednesday. Can, can we call him back? Yeah. Can we please call him back? Okay. Circles in lines. Patterns. Baking blacktop. Glimmer, glimmer, wave, waves of grain, hot, sweaty, anchored eyes, aware, focus, present, lead vehicle, keep up, keep up, car on road, roadblock, explosion, gunfire, wheel over. Sparks, the 50, the 50, the 50. Breathe, training, stagger formation. Exit vehicle, use truck as defense, lay down fire. Crash, roar, clatter, squeezing, pulling, shooting, blind. Sparks, where are you, Sparks? Dust like mist, exposed targets. Come on, Sparks, get to the building, behind stone. Move and shoot, move and shoot. I'll cover you, you cover me, keep me safe. Get me home. Get off. Jesus Christ. I got the mail. How the hell did you get in here? Yeah, your door's open. Where's your mom? I'm not here. Obviously. Can I help you with something? Yeah, you can. What about my story? I quit. I moved on. You quit? What, to, to what? Real estate. Guy I know comes into the rabbit's been asking me for years. Says I'm a natural. You promised me. You guaranteed it. Well, the life of a writer is full of disappointments. Get used to it. Are you even a writer? I haven't heard you read a damn word of your own. Hey, I was in the new voices too, you know. I even signed a book deal from it, Good Time Charlie, but they killed it in the last minute. Maybe it wasn't any good. Maybe you're right. Look, Thomas. What the hell are you Thomas, doing? Thomas, I. Put what, that what, down. What? I'm not doing now. anything. I'm no, not fine, there. Fine. Give it to me. Hey. Hey, what the what hell the are you even doing here, huh? Why don't you give us all a break and send your precious ghost boy home? I told you. He can't go home. He can go home. He can do whatever you want him to do. It's a work of fiction. 
Why don't you stop being such a goddamn coward and start being coward. a lawyer? Coward! You have no idea where I've been. You have no idea what I've done. Listen, I'm... You know what? Forget this. We help writers in this house. That's what your mother told me. Thomas, a life lived for others is worth twice as much. How'd you get up here? I duked your concierge ten bucks to let me up. Yeah, figures. What do you want? I'm sorry. That's it? All right then, good talk. You know, my mom always said that my greatest gift was helping people. Mike Q, Tess, Harmony Jones. Talented people like you. 
But I was too selfish to buy into any of that. My mom died, Jeff. She passed on Thanksgiving night. And if I would do just about anything to share one more moment with her so I could tell her that I know that she's right. I'm sorry, Jeff. I hope you believe that. Thomas. Celery, green onions, little chives, some cayenne, some mayo, and a little paprika to top it off. It smells weird, man. It smells like eggs and secret ingredients, man. Egg salad was never my bag. I mean, I ate it, you know, my mom made it for me, but it was weird, man. It was, it was really weird. Weird? Like how? It was bad. Really, so, so bad. <laughs> A lot of the stuff that she made was bad. You complain? Oh, hell no. Eating bland, overcooked Irish lady food was a small price to pay. Hmm. My mother, she was a force, man. She was smart. She could have been a really, really great writer. You know? And she believed in me, too, man. All these years. She really got me through it. All right. Try... This. Oh man. Yeah. I don't just know. Just try it. Wow. That is not bad. That is good. That is really good. Yeah, because I got skills. Hmm. Pickles and lettuce. Yeah, I'll take it as it's made. This is a family recipe. No, it was a, uh, a boy, my boy, Sparks. His mother's, actually. Um, Sparks usually only ate Arby's. Loved it, talked about it all the time. I mean, we'd be riding through those one-wheel towns in Iraq, and he'd be sitting on top of the truck with the 50 cal, screaming down to me, hey, right there, man, that'd be a great place to open up an Arby's. <laughs> Crazy. Dude had a fire recipe for egg salad, though. Sparks, that's cool. I was wish I had a cool nickname like Sparks. Sparks was this crazy ass white boy from Southern Indiana. Talk my ear off. And he was my boy, though. He was. You know how he got to be called Sparks? Dude used to eat Pop Rocks in the dark with his mouth open. He set the record on the obstacle course in basic. He could draw cartoons, he could fix any truck. He chewed tobacco. He was funny as hell. He got me through the war. A couple months ago, he killed himself. Close boy. Make it through firefights, landmines, make it home. It can still get you. Sitting in your parents' garage in Indiana.
It could, st it could still catch you. <sighs> One egg salad sandwich. Courtesy of Sparks. Thank you.
basic. Second squad, devil dogs. You did <laughs> Arby's. <laughs> All right, you win. Checkmate, brother. <laughs> Game set match. I get for you. Jack Daniels, neat. Oh, you don't. I know you. I know you. Yeah? Everyone knows you in my line. Oh. You should be in my line, frankly. Well, maybe I should. <laughs> Scouting talent tonight? Sort of. The writer found his end he was looking for. I already have it, but he asked me to come listen to it live. Huh. Hey, Jeff. Nice to see you. Yes. Oh, how nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Hello there, sir. What can I get for you? I have the special. Ah, oh, excellent choice. You a friend of Jeff's? Jeff's my son. Oh. I'm Roosevelt. Well, hello there. My name's Thomas. I know. You helped my son. That one's on me, sir. Thank you. Ah, there you are. I need the lineup. Are you MC tonight? Yeah. Randy's snowmobiling up in Manaqua. Ah, of course. Okay. Your mom. Yeah. She was the best of us. Don't do that again, Thomas. Or I will stab you in the face. Okay. Sounds like fun. Okay. Oh. 
It's that time, folks. Local writers giving you their best in seven minutes or less. First up, you know him. I love him. He has sworn off fast food. Jefferson! <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. It's a, it's a special evening tonight. For one, my father's here. Uh, he is the black man back here. Drinks are him, so <laughs> feel free. Uh, some years ago, I, I spent some time in a faraway land, hot, sweaty, um, wind, explosions, dirt. And I made a promise to a friend that if I make it home, I'm going to become a writer. And that friend made sure that I made it home. But I needed help. And a lot of people helped me. They pushed me, they supported me, they loved me, in spite of myself. Uh, so tonight, I had something planned for you guys, but instead, I think I, I want to read what inspired me to uh, fulfill my journey. This is Fox Island. John fell to his knees in the sand. He knew, at last, he had only loved his brother, nothing more. And Michael the Brave expected more of him, not to live a half-life of torment and reproach. Gingerly, he pulled the urn from the hat box pilfered from his parents' lake house mantle. Tears mixed with the black ash spread onto the earth of Fox Island. Years of anguish spilled onto the faded ground. Urn emptied, he floated, weightless, onto the grass and downy sand. He closed his eyes. He slept. <laughs> 